Today we're going to determine why DNA has differences and we're also going to figure out whether or not those differences actually matter. We've been talking about human albinism and looking at why we have some individuals that are albino and some individuals that are not albino. And we've talked about how the differences in traits are because differences in shapes of proteins. And we knew that differences in DNA or versions of alleles could lead to those different proteins. And a non-functional allele would lead to a non-functional or a different shaped protein. And then we figured out that different amino acids and the different characteristics or properties of those amino acids were what led to those different shapes. Now we're going to zoom in a little bit here on our DNA. Specifically, sometimes, D, there are different versions of those genes. We call those different versions of the genes allele. And version one might lead to a functional amino acid sequence and a functional protein, and version two might lead to a different amino acid sequence, which would also change the shape of the protein, making it non-functional. The key is that to get these different amino acid sequences, you have a different DNA sequence. Those can come about through genetic mutations. And this is an opportunity for you to take notes in your big ideas packet. These mutations are changes in the DNA sequence. So the difference between G and C or A and T might be one example of a mutation. But where exactly do these mutations come from? Mutations can be caused in many, diff many different things. One of them is spontaneous errors in base pairing. In the same way that sometimes when I'm making a Xerox copy, um, there'll be a blip of ink or something just will happen spontaneously, that can be one reason we would have a um, mutation or a change in our DNA. We also get them from environmental mutagens, such as UV rays, that could potentially cause the DNA sequence to change. But are these mutations always harmful? We know that if DNA is different, that the RNA is different. But will that always change the protein and the trait? Let's look at some example cases. At this time, take a moment and think about this. Are mutations harmful using the activity 1.8 Do DNA Mutations Matter? So I will have you pause the lecture at this point. So really, in short, the answer is it depends. Let's look at case one, which is silent mutations. Sometimes a single base change produces the same amino acid, so the protein isn't affected. So if you look at your amino acid chart, you'll see the codon AAA and the codon AAG both code for phenylalanine. So if there is a mutation, causing this A to turn into a G, it will change the DNA, it will change the RNA, but that, that won't actually impact the protein, which means it won't impact the trait. In case two, we might consider that the change in protein could be small enough that it might not actually impact the trait. For example, if AAA codes for phenylalanine and AAT codes for leucine, both of them are hydrophobic so it might not actually change the shape of the protein significantly. Or, so as a result, you might have a change in DNA, a change in RNA. The amino acids might change slightly, changing the protein, but the shape doesn't change, so the trait stays the same. Sometimes the protein changes significantly enough that the trait is different. For example, AAA codes for phenylalanine, but if this second letter here is converted into G, we know that phenylalanine is hydrophobic, AGA codes for serine, which is hydrophilic. That may change the shape of the protein enough to actually change the trait. But even if the trait is different, is it actually harmful? So we know that, um, we, let's say we get to a place where the DNA changes, changing the RNA and the protein shape, which changes the trait. Does it really, does that really matter? So let's think about our TYR mutation. Is it harmful? 
or does it depend on what environment they live in? For example, some eugenetic mutations can help, some can harm, and some can have little or no effect on an organism's success in the environment. And some genetic mutations could be helpful or harmful depending on the environment. For example, there are helpful mutations, one of which is a mutation on chromosome 3 that actually makes people immune to HIV. They end up missing a protein on the outside of their T cells, which means that they are resistant to HIV infection and therefore AIDS. There are some clearly harmful mutations. PKU is caused by a problem on chromosome 12. If children have two copies of this, they can't break down the amino acid phenylalanine. And if they if they eat phenylalanine, that can cause a buildup of it in their brain and lead to mental retardation by the end of their first year of life. Sometimes mutations don't matter at all. For example, the American curl in cats. This is a super small change in the phenotype, makes these kind of cute cat ears, but it doesn't really affect whether how these kitties survive in their environment or whether or not they're able to reproduce. But sometimes it depends on the environment. One example of this is lactose tolerance. So lactose intolerance that appears towards the end of that first year makes it easy to wean off young, meaning those, those mothers are able to um, feed other food to their babies and potentially have more babies sooner. Lactose tolerance is helpful in a place that has milk as food. So if babies can continue to drink cow milk or goat milk later on in life, that gives them another food source. So depending on what types of food sources are available, if it's an environment where having lots of babies is helpful, maybe where farming is very important to their um, income and their survival, ha being able to have lots of babies and wean those babies off sooner to get, so they can go ahead and get pregnant again, that um, would make lactose intolerance helpful. In an environment where food is um, one of the key food sources is milk from other organisms like cows and goats, being lactose tolerant is beneficial. So in summary, environment can cause mutations and environment can determine whether or not that mutation is harmful if it occurs. What questions do you still have? Turn and talk to a person next to you about that. Pause me and when you're ready. Now that you've talked about some possible questions, I imagine one of you might have asked, can we pass on our mutations? And that gives us a great next step as we move on in our unit.